Hi. Now, in the next two parts of this question, we've got to calculate the discriminant of x squared minus 3x plus 5 and also explain why x plus 2 multiplied by x squared minus 3x plus 5 is always positive for x greater than minus 2. And don't forget that in the first part of this question where we were asked to find the coordinates of the minimum point of this curve, and we had to justify that it was a minimum, we found out that that minimum point had coordinates 1, 9. Okay? So, if you'd like to have a go at this problem, if you haven't done it already, just give you a moment to pause the video, come back when ready, and I'll run through the work solution. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So first of all then we've got to calculate the discriminant of x squared minus 3x plus 5. And just as a brief reminder, remember that if you've got a quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, you can find out what x is through this formula here. But the discriminant is this part in here, it's equal to b squared minus 4ac. It tells you how many roots that the equation would have. Okay, so that's our way of working out part two then. We're just going to put down here that the discriminant, let's just write it in, the discriminant okay, equals b squared minus 4ac. Let's just put that in there. We can see that b, okay, coefficient of x, and the coefficient of x is minus 3, so it's going to be minus 3 all squared minus 4 multiplied by a. a is the coefficient of x squared, which is 1. And c is the constant, 5 in this case. So b squared minus 4ac. And if you work that out, we've got 9 minus 20, which is going to be minus 11. OK? So in part 3, explain why why, I know it hasn't got a y here, but this is essentially the graph, y equals x plus 2 uh, multiplied by x squared minus 3x plus 5 is always positive for x greater than minus 2. So what I'm going to do is we'll just sketch that graph out here, okay, on the right. We'll have our axes, and uh, what else do we know about this? Well, we know that it's a positive cubic graph because if you multiply x with the x squared, you've got positive x cubed. And positive x cubed graphs always take on this kind of shape, okay, where x cubed is greater than zero. So I know it's going to have this kind of shape. I know that it's got a minimum point at 1, 9, so let's just mark that in at 1, 9. We'll go 1 across, 9 up. Let's just say it's this point here at 1, 9. OK, and we can see that when x is minus 2, y would be equal to 0, where it crosses the x-axis. So we know it crosses at minus 2, let's say that that's minus 2 there. So it's clearly going to come up like this through here. But where else does it cross the x-axis? Well, when y equals naught, either this fact, x plus 2 equals 0, which gives us minus 2, or x squared minus 3x plus 5 would equal 0. But from part 2, we've seen that this discriminant is negative. And if you've got a negative value in here, you'd get a maths error. No roots, in other words. OK? So therefore, x squared minus 3x plus 5 can never be zero. So there's no way it's going to come back down like on this part of the curve and cross the x-axis. So what we've got is a graph that's coming up through here. It's going to rise. It's going to cross the y-axis when x is zero. When x is zero, this bracket here will be two and this one will be plus five. So it's going to cross at ten. So what we've got is a graph then looking something like this, coming up through the minus two, up, down through the ten, curves around here, and then back up again like that. So it's always going to be positive for x greater than minus two. 
So let's just summarize those points here. It's a positive cubic, the minimum's at 1, 9. The discriminant shows that when x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 0, there are no roots. So the graph only crosses the x-axis at x equals minus 2. Therefore, essentially, our equation for our graph has to be greater than 0 for x greater than minus 2. So there's our solution then to part 3. And hope that makes sense, okay? There you go.